I'm Kate Zenor, and I'm here with Matt Burns. Yo, yo, yo! Two-time two air guitar world champion. Mm. And what is your stage name? Again? My stage name is Aristotle. Been and. competing in air guitar competitions for a long time, and now I'm at the gorgeous LSU at the Immaculate Shaver Theater putting on Airness by Chelsea Markintel. Let's get it. It was really good. I saw mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. So how did you pick the name Aristotle? Great question. Uh, Aristotle, uh, it came to me kind of like a, in a dream, you know? I was watching Bill and Ted the night before, fantastic movie, I don't know if you've ever seen it. I haven't. It's one of, it's one of Keanu's earliest, he's fantastic in it. Um, he plays a member of a band called the Wild Stallions, he's failing history, so he has to go back in time to pass history, right? He has to talk to all these historical figures, and he goes back in time, and he meets Socrates, who we call Socrates. And I remember sitting there watching it, just like looking for inspiration. And I was like, okay, Socrates, and there's Plato, and there's Aristotle. Wait a minute. Ha! Light bulb moment. I adopted the moniker Aristotle. And, and you spell it with A I R, right? A I R. Aristotle, baby. Mm. <laughs> so, like, how did you get started with this? Like, what made you want to get into air guitar? So, uh, I mean, everything about air guitar made me want to get into air guitar. It's such a ridiculous thing, but it's so much fun. Um, Air guitar competitions have been going on around the world now for a very, very long time. Maybe like 27 years. <laughs> um, uh, they started off in Finland as a world peace promotion. I thought it was such a beautiful way to encourage um, people to get together. Even if you don't understand each other, loving music is such a shared language. Mm -hmm. It's such a universal thing that I was uh, immediately drawn to it, immediately hooked to it. I saw a documentary about it chronicling... Uh, competitive air guitar because everybody air guitars you know mm -hmm. everybody has heard a song uh, you know everybody's like drummed along on the steering wheel everybody's yeah. sang so passionately into that shampoo bottle you know <laughs> and competitive air guitar kind of takes that raw appreciation of music and puts it out on a stage it's a lot of fun competitions are big loud ridiculous I call them a mix between drag shows and professional wrestling love both of that Gr dreams do come true <laughs> dreams do come true uh, it's like a stand-up act, a rock concert, and a comedy show rolled into one uh, legitimately competitive evening of entertainment. You never know what to expect at an air guitar competition. Mm -hmm. And, man, I'm just addicted to them. It's my favorite kind of performance art in the world. I call it interpretive dance to a better soundtrack. I love that. Thanks. Because, um, yeah, so you saw this documentary. Mm -hmm. And so what was your like first steps? Like how, like what was the first step you took to like get into the community to like really break in? So I saw the documentary and coincidentally, um, I'm from Staten Island, New York and the New York contest was happening like two weeks after I saw the documentary. I went on the website and like I found out about the tour dates and stuff like that. And, um, I registered, I signed up to compete. I kind of just like, you know, you just pick up a name, you kind of just show up and mm -hmm. you're in. It's a super welcoming community. This is a, a world where everybody wants to win very, very badly. Yeah. But more so, they want to make friends and have fun. Like, if you're in this to win, you're in it for the wrong reasons. Mm -hmm. You're there to have fun. You're there to put on a really, really good show. And um, it's a beautiful community full of people who, if it's your first time, if you're a guest, if you're a judge, no matter who you are, they just want to bring you in and tell you everything about it so that you can be better. If everybody is better in the world of air guitar, the show is better, and everybody feels better, looks better, has more fun. It's so it's kind of more of a group mentality than like thousand individual. percent, yeah. thousand percent, thousand percent. So I remember my first show. I was very nervous. I was in the green room. I was wearing my dad's tie <laughs> and leather pants. It was fantastic. And um, I was sitting there. I was super nervous. And Six String General from DC came in, and Juris Rockter also from DC came in. I love in. these names. Oh, fantastic! <laughs> Betty B. Good was there that night. Windhammer, uh, an amazing crew. My very first uh, competition ever. Super nervous. Everybody was super encouraging, mm -hmm. and I just got bit by the bug, and I wanted to come back to compete next year. But at the time, I was 19 years old, mm -hmm. and Jose Cuervo was the tour sponsor that year, so there were like no one under 21 oh. allowed to compete under any circumstances. And well, I just don't think rules are very rock and roll. So I was like, no. So I was like, everybody knows me in New York. So I went to Philly and I showed up three hours early before the contest and Scooby-Doo style. I had like a newspaper across my face and I waited for the bouncers to change shifts. And when they did, I ran into a bathroom stall and I hid in there for two hours for the venue to fill up. And then I came out with a hoodie up. I was like, hi, I'm Aristotle. I'm here to compete. And I competed um, at that contest. 
And so that got me a lot of street cred in the air guitar community because people from like, you know, the LA and Denver scenes were like, yo, did you hear about this kid from Philly? He's sneaking in a contest and he's like, he's not drinking at these bars. He's just pretending to play the guitar. So where it's with spread. Perf. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. And uh, that kind of put me on the map. And then eventually I became of age to compete and I started competing all over the East Coast, DC, Boston, Philly, and New York. And then in 2012, I was fortunate enough to win my first national championship. I ended up winning four national championships. Super proud of that. And uh, I also was able to win two world titles, bringing home the gold. The USA, let's go. And the world championships in Finland, right? World championships are in Finland every year. Uh, countries all over the world have their own uh, n national tour that they put together. They weed out their best champions and pit them against other champions, and we all show up to a sleepy little town in northern Finland, um, and we rock out together for four days, and we crown a champion, and then we all go camping afterwards and go camping. Check afterwards? out the northern lights. It's a good time. It's that a really sounds good like time. a great time. It's a really, really good time. So I saw the show, and I'm curious, like, how accurate is the show in representing? the way the competitions work, like the community, all of that. Like, how accurate is the show? It's it's super accurate. Pre um, I was involved with the original production at the Humana Festival for New American Drama. It was a great, great time. Uh, I met with Chelsea after she had already kind of written the show. Mm -hmm. I, had a, I had a friend that I kind of grew up doing community theater with. Um, he was going to NYU at the time, and he saw a casting call about an about a play about an air guitar champion from Staten Island, New York. Just I'm from Staten Island, New York. <laughs> so I told my friend, I was like, oh my God, this sounds like incredible. When can I see it? And he was like, no, you idiot. Like, you should be in this show. So without telling me, he wrote a letter to Chelsea, put us in touch. And then um, before I knew it, I was in Kentucky for two months. Uh, it was a really interesting process working on a new play. I'd never done that. I had only done like Guys and Dolls before. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I had never worked on a new play where every day... The writer was just in the room watching the cast work, and every day we'd get new pages. Every day we would get new... Oh, wow. Yeah. So every, it was still being worked on it was still like, being, while y'all were doing it. Absolutely. Absolutely. So I remember Chelsea did such an amazing amount of research beforehand. She came in um, with a lot of really cool ideas for everything, too, but sitting down with her was awesome. She had never heard about like a Dark Horse contest before mm -hmm. we started hanging out. That became a huge... Yeah, that became a huge point in the show. Point in the show. And... Um, and the relationships between all the characters are also very, very accurate. It's like, it's just about how hard are you trying to be there? How hard do you want to be there? How much are you helping other people get better while you're there? Mm -hmm. You know, like, the, if you're kind of a jerk, that gets weeded out pretty quick because everybody, like, if you're cool enough to fly across the world to pretend to play the guitar for 60 seconds... Like, you can sit with us at the lunch table. Like, it's yeah. pretty cool. So, and I think that that's a beautiful thing in a world where so much of what you do, especially in theater, theater's such a competitive world. Mm -hmm. If you want to make Very. it in theater, you got to get a little cutthroat. And in air guitar, if you want to make it, you got to learn how to work together. And I, I think that, that that's, a beautiful, that's a beautiful way to make everybody better. I was hoping, you know, it was similar because I saw the show and I just, I loved all the relationships between the characters. I just thought it looked like so much fun. And so it's nice to hear that that's, accurate yeah absolutely and i mean like you there's also like it's it we really do call each other by our air guitar names the entire really weekend. oh yeah 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 we call each other it's it, we've just known each other for so long now at this point everybody sends each other christmas cards and mm -hmm. everything we really are really really good friends uh a lot of that has to do with just the advent of social media yeah being able to stay in touch um with my friends from France, with my friends from Germany, with my friends from Russia. Your friends from all over now. Everywhere. Uh, the, the, the Air Guitar World Championships have about 20 different countries being represented every year. Um, Nigeria had their first championship Nigeria, this year. Wow. Oh, yeah. Go slim. Good job out there, bud. That was <laughs> awesome. Um, so it's super exciting, the fact that this is still growing globally, mm -hmm. and it's still growing um, here in the States. Here in the States, it's, it's, it's absolutely huge. Um, we've been on ESPN the last couple summers. Oh, really? Yeah, the Nationals were on ESPN. Wow. Two years ago, and we did another event for them over the summer. It was it was so much fun watching watching that all get put together, mm -hmm. watching like the inner workings of it and everything like that. Um, and as it continues to grow, my whole thing is I'm very interested in bringing in different types of people. Mm -hmm. Right? Like I really, really like 
new air guitar is such a place for individuals to shine. Mm -hmm. What it means to be an individual, you can put that on however you want to. You can be whoever you want. If you want to be an exaggerated version of yourself, awesome. If you want to be the exact opposite of yourself, just as awesome. Yeah. Just bring it, have fun, lean into it, get a little silly with it, and everybody's going to have a blast. Well, and I think and I think that the show Airness, which is it's such a it's such a fantastic show. Um it's so good for so many reasons. Like, if you're new to air guitar, this is such an amazing introduction to the world of air guitar to hopefully get you to come out to compete. If you're into rock concerts and you're not really a theater goer, if you're not really a fan of going to see plays at the theater, this is the play to get you to come see for the first time. Like, this, is, this, is, this show is such a good icebreaker for, like, that one uncle that you have that would never go to a theater. This is he would get so invested in this. Oh, the audience knowing. interaction at the show is like really amazing. Like it's everyone fantastic. was getting so into it. Exactly. Exactly. You know, I mean, everyone knew the music. It was just like a good time. Exactly. It's just fun. It's fun to go and have fun. Mm -hmm. Exactly. <laughs> okay. Well, my last question would be: What would be your recommendation for someone who saw the show and was curious about like getting involved? Like, what would you say like the first steps would be? The first step, uh, if you have seen Airness and you really, really want to start to get involved in air guitar, which I encourage everybody to do. You'll have so much fun. Um, my first bit of advice would be figure out who your character is. Mm -hmm. Figure out a character before you start working on your song or before you start working on anything. Figure out who you are on stage, who that person is and what that means to you. And that, that's going to change over time. It's going to change over years. But figure out who your character is. Then figure out what song that character would love to play mm -hmm. and why they would love to play it. And then once you just figure out what it means to be somebody else rocking out to a bit of music that that person loves, it all just starts flowing. It becomes gravy, baby. Well, that sounds awesome. I know I've talked to a lot of people who are now interested in learning how to do air guitar, myself included. Yes. So, <laughs> so what would your stage name be? I don't know. I, I was actually talking to um, a friend of mine about that, and I'm actually not sure. Probably something like gothy and witchy, because... Fantastic. That's sort of my thing. There you go. But, um, no, I was actually listening to some classic rock the other day being like, I wonder if it's like, would this be my song? Like, That's how it starts. You so, you'll never hear a riff the same way again now. You know? No, it, it's, it's really, really true. How would, I, how would I? I'm like, I was listening to music going, it. oh my God, I could like do something really cool with that. I'm like. <laughs> there you go. There you go. New fixation. So. <laughs> I'm sorry. We've doomed you now. Yes, you've, you've truly doomed Apologies. me. Apologies. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Well, thanks for sitting down and chatting with me. Thanks I for having me. really enjoyed it. So how, how much longer is the run of the show? The run of the show uh, for another six days. The last show is Sunday. Numbers again. <laughs> <laughs> uh, our last show is uh, this Sunday. So come out and see it. Uh, have your mind blown. Have your faces melted. Your hearts broken. And then sewn back together with the power of love and rock and stuff. Go see it. It's really good. Yeah! <laughs>